This is the Unagi Model 1 Voyager. I reviewed the Model 1 Classic four years ago, if you can believe that. Um, and according to Unagi, they spent three years improving some of the electronics uh, to make this scooter have better efficiency, get better range, up to an advertised range of 25 miles, which we'll talk about. And then I'm gonna compare it to the old scooter. I'm gonna give you the nitty gritty about it and just who I think this scooter is for and who it's not. Tune right in, Electron Surfer, like and subscribe. One of the things you hopefully note about the Unagi is, is its looks, right? It's a sharp looking scooter. Um, it uses this carbon fiber composite stem with a one piece aluminum deck. It's the same thing they've used for a while, but it does make it for a very nice looking scooter. These are two 500 watt motors. You get a thousand watts total. Those motors are sitting under seven and a half inch honeycomb tires. All this is powered by their revamped electronics. They are still using a 36 volt battery, punches well above its weight class performance wise, even with a modest 10 amp hours of capacity. The battery comes with full UL listing, giving you extra comfort on the battery safety front. Electronic braking has been improved and the easy to control cockpit is unchanged. Folding mechanism is also unchanged from previous versions. All you have to do is relieve a tiny bit of pressure up and push that down, it snaps into place. Just easy to go back down. And when you put it down, it locks into this position. So when carrying it, it doesn't flop around. Full specs, see the description, but for now, come along. One of my absolute favorite ways to use my electric scooter is in a scenario like today, where I'm trying to save some money and time on parking. Uh, you see here, I'm able to park in an area that doesn't require payment. I'm a little further away from the office, but I got the Unagi Model 1 Voyager in the back seat. I'm show you how it gets in and out of the car. Um, the only thing I would say for a transportation perspective for that particular scooter is a scooter is where both your wheels sit on the ground when the, in the folded position. They tend to move around in the back of your car, uh, your boot, whatever you like to call it. Um, so that's my only note, but I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna bring you along on my commute into the office. All right, here we have the Nagi Voyager right there in the back seat. Couldn't be simpler to unfold it. Well, that just didn't work very good. Oh, did it? That was interesting. First time on a kickstand. Hmm. I have a little kickstand instability, actually. Weird. Gets up, get what up to feels pretty close to 20 miles per hour, uh, real quickly. You gotta watch out for that kind of stuff. So the right side button here changes your uh, speed mode. Um, I've noticed, actually I've had a couple times already that I've accidentally changed to a different speed mode, uh, accidentally, just but hitting that button. This is a push to start scooter, so if sitting here to stop, you are not gonna have problems by accidentally hitting the throttle. Uh, the, the braking response is good and solid, uh, though we have that little flashing tail light for letting people know what you're doing. All right, here's a test. Oh boy, that is brutal. Just a couple observations here. I got the capital behind me. I'm almost into the office. Uh, it goes really quickly on an electric scooter. You can just transition through the city really quick. Um, one, the honeycomb tires aren't doing a fantastic job with the bumps, especially on the kind of roads I'm dealing with here. Um, not totally surprising. Um, there is, you know, quite a bit of flex and movement in the stem, just like the other. So it isn't a robust feeling scooter, but it is very smooth and very accelerating wise and very quiet. Um, the power seems to be delivered really nicely and I've noticed a little bit of tendency sometimes I'm hitting this button I'm actually changing my speed limits inadvertently which is kind of a bummer uh, especially when I went to take off from a stoplight and I was now on speed limit one instead of three it's, it's going along good it's a uh, you know oh that's another thing I noticed when taking off so say you're trying to do a quick start and to do that because this is a kick to start scooter I tend to like to kick a little bit uh, because of the angle of the deck and the handlebars, uh, to do that, you kind of you kind of come up against the stem. Um, so I kind of find my chest kind of hitting the stem and almost the camera uh, while I'm taking off from a stop. Just something to note. That's where you get with electron surfer things you might not really notice or other people might not notice. I call it nitpicky. I call it observant. All 
All right, made it into the office. Um, this only tracks whole miles, so I'm a little under three, I think. Um, battery didn't go down at all, so we'll see what the range ends up being. How much shorter will your scooter go than its advertised range when you're going full out? A lot, generally. Um, this is the Unagi Model 1 Voyager. Uh, I have it unlocked at 20 miles per hour top speed. Has a estimated range or advertised range of 25 miles. Of course, that's with a five pound lighter rider than me, so not a lot, um, and going slower. So, but you're gonna ride this probably fast, so I'm gonna do the same. I'll take you along and check in the halfway point, see where we are on the battery, and see how much range we actually lose. So we're going to be in the highest assist level with dual motors. I've done tests both ways with dual motor scooters. Typically a dual motor scooter in single motor mode doesn't get much better range than a dual motor mode because you're working against the resistance of that extra motor. So from my experience, if it's got dual motors, just go dual motor mode. Um, so I'm fully charged and it says I got an estimate of 11.2 miles. Of course, that's a lot less advertised. We're going to see what this really does. You can see here there's a symbol on the scooter. This is because this scooter, especially the uh, Model 1 Voyager, can be locked. Pretty interesting. It kind of brings in some of the uh, anti-theft ability too with it. So I think it has probably some pluses and minuses. So we're in the neighborhood of uh, three miles into my range test here. Maximum range, maximum speed range test or minimum range test. I've heard other people call it. You can see I just ticked down one bar. Um, so that kind of suggests to me that potentially the everything is a little optimistic. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to push it a little bit, but not too crazy because I don't want to be walking home. Uh, we're going to see where we end up. But generally, I think the Unagi is a quite a nice scooter for the very specific use scenario. Um, excuse the beeping over here. It's because uh, my... Uh, membership is not uh, resetting with the app so it's like it thinks it's being stolen or something i honestly i didn't steal it i just stole it to do a review right um but anyway um if you have smooth paths if you don't have a long ways to go um it's quiet um i could see it being a really uh, a niche use scenario for this especially if you go with the membership scenario i think you know on campuses uh, i think there's a lot of scenarios this is can work for you there's a lot that it's not going to. It's going to underperform versus some other scooters, in my opinion. Other scooters that cost quite a bit less than this. I do really like the acceleration. It's not super, super snappy, uh, but it has a real good feel. So with 36 volt scooter, you will start to notice a performance drop an inevitable performance drop just because you don't have that much voltage. Uh, you don't get as big of a performance drop when you have a higher voltage scooter. <laughs> this would be a good place to uh, test top speed. Especially pass a speed, speed bump. Nice and flat. My guess would be we're pretty dang close to 20. I think that the estimator in the app is pretty close. Um, I put in, uh, you can actually put in your weight and the type of uh, hill, how hilly um, your riding is. And I put uh, 10 pounds over my weight, so I put 180 pounds to account for my backpack. Um, and I feel like that was pretty true. So kudos to Unagi for having the app being accurate to what you actually might expect. So my minimum range, somewhere around a third of the advertised range. Eh, you know, that seems about reasonable, I guess. Um, about what I see. God, I gotta shut that thing off. Oh, yay, yay. Let me show you how nicely the uh, electronic braking. I'm going down a steep hill. I'm able to come to pretty much a complete stop. That's actually impress really impressive me. Actually, the back tire uh, sort of locked up a little bit. Yeah, that's really impressive for electronic brake. Does a nice job. Very little slowing down there, actually. It's kind of moved right on through it. 
So you saw some of the performance of this Model 1 Voyager as a road, which is really on par with 48 volt scooters as you saw my comparison graph. If you compare this to the Model 1 Classic, the acceleration and hill climbing are pretty much unchanged actually. So the Voyager really starts to show its electronics uh, improvements with 40% better electronic braking, 30% more range, and 20% more efficiency than the outgoing model. Still, this isn't like a huge range monster by any means. Portability, of course, is still excellent. This actually measured under the uh, advertised weight. I measured it at 28.4 pounds. So really, to get a scooter that's got this much performance for this weight, um, it's really, there isn't really an option out there that really fits that bill. This is a great stylish way to get around, you know, and, and it's a great way to just explore your city. So, hey, thanks for watching. Catch the wave. See you next time.